you have chosen to read on today. This is awesome. Test, test. The scripture I chose to read today comes from 1 John 1 and 7. And the scripture reads, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Yeah. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word.
every now and then you ought to give God some praise. Some unscripted praise. Somebody say unscripted praise. Amen. Because that's what he wants from us. He wants the best of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for stopping by just for a little while. Where he's welcome, amen. Somebody, amen. amen. Somebody, we like to thank all of you who are tuned in to us on Facebook and every other social media outlet in our summer breeze, amen. Our summer breeze experience. This is the worship experience, amen. We come, we get in, we do what we have to do. Bless God. Let him bless us, then we get out. Amen. Happy Fourth to all of you all out there. They got them hot boxes going. Amen. With them hot links and baby backs and steaks. Amen. And all that good stuff. Amen. We just had to come and worship God on today and let him know that we appreciate him for our independence. Not in our independence from Britain, amen, but our independence from sin. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Because if you are in Christ, you are a new creature. Amen. Behold, all things are passed away. And what? Be all things have become what? New. new. Amen, amen. But now it's time to hear from heaven. Amen. We got one that's able to preach. Amen. Our very own Deaconess Valencia Houston is going to come and bless us on today. She's going to come and bless us on today with a word that is relative in this season. So with your hand extended towards the pulpit, your hands extended. Amen. Say Deaconess Houston. Preach the word. Deaconess Houston. Preach the word. Preach until you reach. I present to some and introduce to others our very own Deaconess Valencia Houston. worthiness, Lord. We thank him just because of who he is. Amen? Amen. And I thank him so that I'm able to stand here in front of friends, friends and family. Amen? Amen? To proclaim the word of God. Amen. So if you come along with me, I'm going to 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. 1 Kings, 18th chapter. And just four verses starting at verse 20 to 24. 1 Kings 18, 20 to 24, and I'm using the NASB version. Amen? And it says, So Ahab sent orders among all the sons of Israel and brought the prophets together at Mount Carmel. Then Elijah approached all the people and said, how long are you going to struggle with the two choices? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people did not answer him so much as a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left as a prophet of the Lord, while Baal's prophet are 450 men. Now, have them give us two oxen and have them choose the one ox for themselves and cut it up and place it on the wood. Put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other ox and lay it on the wood. And I will put, I will not put a fire under it. Then you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire he is God. And all the people replied, that is a good idea. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all things. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for this opportunity to be here, Lord Jesus. And even though this is a holiday, your people are still gathered together to hear what thus saith the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let everyone say amen. 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 So I titled my message, It's Going Down. Say it with me. It's going down. It's going down. Okay. See, according to the Urban Dictionary, this means something is about to jump off. Something important is about to happen or it's happening now. Now, with that in mind, I think I'll begin with saying the same thing I always say. What? a year this week has been. <laughs> we know all the things that has happened, but you know what? I want to, I want to concentrate on what we recently celebrated, the newly federal holiday, which is called what? Juneteenth. I think everybody got that one, right? This holiday is celebrating the emancipation of African Americans who have been enslaved in the United States from, uh, through the 13th Amendment on January 1st. 1863. But see, not everyone would immediately be free. Freedom wouldn't come to Texas until June 19, 1865. Mm -hmm. Two years and some later. Well, and that was when the Union troops arrived and announced that 250,000 enslaved black people were free by executive order. Amen? Now, this day came to be known as June by the newly free people in Texas. Now this marks our country's second independent day, which is today, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody say, who knew? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So uh, with that, I want to say happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day, right? So whether you have a great big old hookout or you have a traveling spoon like me, uh -huh. oh, enjoy oh. your day, right? I ain't got to cook, so... I'll be over your house, okay? <laughs> okay. Now, today my message, um, it picks up where my last message from Mother Day ended, and that was with the miracles from the prophet Elijah. Well, you know, with that miracle, it was three miracles that happened in 1 Kings 17. One was being, uh, Elijah was being fed by the ravens. Now, you know that's unnatural, but God. Somebody said, oh, but God. Uh -huh. And then the second miracle on that in that uh, uh, chapter was the miracle of the barrel of flour and oil. And then the third uh, miracle was the resurrection of the little son that Elijah prayed over and God brought him back to life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to pick up off after that. It says that once a long time ago, an evil king came into power over God's people, the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now his name was Ahab. Ahab. And he did more evil in, in the eyes of the Lord than any other before him. Yeah. First Kings 16 and 13 said, but the message Bible says, they call him a new champion of evil. So let's just say and call him the bad to the bone. Right? He was war. Yes, he was. <laughs> well, let me tell you what he did. First, he, he seduced the people of Israel into worshiping false gods. And then he made it his personal mission to stamp out any remnant of genuine faith left among God's people. So he hunt, tracked down, and slaughtered every prophet of the one true God. Now, the drought conditions were continually getting worse, and there was hardly any water to be found. And matter of fact, many of the animals had already died because of the shortage of grass and water. So King Ahab was beginning to worry about his own herds of cattle and flocks of sheep. And then he called on his right-hand man, mm -hmm. Obadiah. And Obadiah was one of the servants, and he told him, something must be done before all of my animals die. He's thinking about the animals, y'all. He's not thinking about the people. Yes. That's how evil he was. He's thinking about his animals. Well, he wanted them to find grass and water. So he tell them, Obadiah, you go in one direction, and then I'll go in the other. And there has to be grass somewhere. So King Ahab and Obadiah, they set off in different directions in search of fresh grass and water. Now let me tell you something about Obadiah. Obadiah 
He served as an overseer or supervisor over the household of King Ahab. And he remained a devout servant of God. See, he is known for safeguarding a hundred prophets of Yahweh from Ahab's wife, the wicked queen Jezebel. Y'all yeah, heard of her. We won't talk about her later. But anyway, because he, what he did was he, he put them into caves. He put 50 in one cave, 50 in another cave, and then he made sure he brought them uh, food and water. So he definitely had a heart for God's people. Right? Check this out. See, this is already a stressful condition, but due to the fact that, that the water, which is our basic element for survival, right? It was scarce. And because this was a stressful situation for everyone, I feel that you should handle stressful situations like a dog. <laughs> for instance, my dog. Do we have a picture of him? No, we don't have oh. a picture of him. <laughs> But my dog, this is what she does. If she can't eat it or play with it, she pee on it and walk away. <laughs> That's how she handles stressful situations. But I, I, I understand because see, some people stress about stress before there's even stress to stress about. Then they stress about stressing over stress that doesn't need to be stressed about. Yeah, that's stressful, right? That's somebody say, yep, that's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, as Obadiah was searching, he saw a man walking towards him. And immediately he recognized that that was Elijah from far away. Then, when they came upon each other, Elijah asked him to tell King Ahab that he wanted to see him. Now, Obadiah, he immediately became resistant and fearful because he knew that King Ahab hated, hated Elijah. So, Elijah, so Obadiah began to tell Elijah that the king, he hates you. I mean, with a passion. He does. He's blaming you because there haven't been any rain for all these years. And every time he thinks he knows where you are, you leave. And nobody can find you. So we hunt for you. So if I tell you you are here and then you leave again, he will want, he will want to kill you and me. So Elijah, I, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. So at this point, as far as Elijah was concerned, it was a great big no. Uh huh. See, he dreaded that assignment that he wanted to so much. That he, Elijah, he would rather do eight loads of laundry and give her a root canal, okay? Then give her that message to the king. <laughs> he didn't want to do it. In other words, as Sweet Brown would say, ain't nobody got time for that, right? No, 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 no. Well, Elijah promised that he would wait around and see the king because he wanted to talk to him. So check this out. God called Elijah to perform one of the greatest miracles described in the Old Testament. So immediately upon seeing Elijah, King Ahab got up in his face and blamed him for the drought. But Elijah <laughs> explained that he was the cause of all this trouble because he turned away from, from Jehovah, the one true God. And then he calls the people of Israel to sing about worshiping idols. See, Elijah confronted the evil king and challenged him to a spiritual showdown. Somebody say, it's going down. It's going down. It's going down. See, Elijah had the spirit of, I can show you better than I can tell you. Okay? I can show you. So here's a little bit of advice. Be careful of what you entertain. Because sin fascinates before it assassinates. Yes. Amen? Yes. Somebody say, it'll kill you. Yes, yes it will. All right, y'all. Let me spill the tea. Okay? Now, it ain't gossip if it's the truth. Right, right, right. Is that right? right so I just want to share some information with you. See, the king wanted everyone gathered at Mount Carmel, along with his 450 prophets, of the false god Baal and 400 prophets of the false god goddess Azeroth. Now see, Elijah was outnumbered, but he wanted the crowd to be clear that he was the underdog. Who likes the underdog? Okay? He was the underdog. So he announced, I am the only prophet of the Lord that is left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Okay? Check this out. Sometimes God doesn't stop you from
for being thrown into the furnace because he has a point to prove to the people that threw you in. Can I hear somebody say amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. That now somebody said it's going down. It's going down. See, it's hard to stand up for what we believe when we see when it seems to look like everybody is against us. Anybody been been in that uh, situation before? Mm -hmm. See, but if Elijah to do it, surely we can too. So here's a point to think about. Stand up for what's right, even if you're standing alone. Just because something is popular doesn't mean that it's right. Amen? Amen. See, there will always be more false gods than false prophets in the world than preachers of the truth. That's just a fact. Atheism is the fastest growing religion in the world. There are countless other religions in the world claiming to be the true religion, the Mormon church, Buddhists, and Jehovah Witness, just as to name a few that are perversion of the church that Jesus built. Somebody say amen. Yeah. And see, even Scientology, y'all heard of that, and Kabbalah have celebrity endorsements. But the greatest lie is that it just doesn't matter what you believe. Y'all heard of that? Somebody said, but you're going to hell for that. Okay, just believe anything you want. You're going to hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, she ain't talking about me. She ain't talking about me. She talking about you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, <laughs> so a large crowd of people gathered to see what was going to happen. He was essentially calling the, the people to fully commit to God and stop dividing their heart between the false god Baal and God. See, Elijah said, if the Lord is God, follow him. That's simple. And if Baal is God, follow him. Matthew 6, 24 says, no man can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will despise the one and be devoted to the other. You cannot serve God and money. Is that right? See, God don't want to hear, the devil made me do it. Uh-uh. No, you can say that one, okay? So he's challenging the people of Israel to get off the fence. See, he said you must make a decision to choose one or the other. But the people said nothing. Crickets. Mm -hmm. That's all he got was a blank stare and complete silence. Joshua 24 and 15 says, choose you this day whom you will serve. Uh -huh. They believed in Baal. They worshiped that God, but their faith was worthless because they were still in sin. Mm -hmm. Here's a spiritual nugget for you. The faith that you live by better be good enough to die by. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. See, the problem is that the people had devalued themselves. First Peter 2 and 9 says that you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of God who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. And I know he's, he's called all of us. Amen? Yeah. Well, look, I got to take a commercial break. Ladies, this is for you. This is from the female perspective, okay? Y'all know we love to shop. Do I have any do I have any shoppers in the place? Uh-huh. Just give this holiday. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, there's value in shopping, right? See, when I hear in my head, <laughs> it's time to shop. I'm thinking, till shop till you drop or till your money stops. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. I said, girl, get ready to slay. Okay. Chavat, 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 Chavat. You know what I'm talking about. Sharon, you know what I'm talking about. Devita, you know what I'm talking about. Karima, Cookie, Tracy, Yanni, even Yanni. You know what I'm talking about, right? Get ready to slay. Say it's going down. It's going down. <laughs> get down, girl. Go get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> See, we all love some retail therapy. And I wish retail therapy was covered by my health insurance. Okay? But it's not. See, the word says, seek the Lord in his strength, because sometimes I get weak to the knees. I don't know about you, but I love to shop. See, to, so to my shopaholics, and my reform shopaholics. Uh -huh. We know <laughs> right. We know the value of a dollar. See, men go shopping to buy what they want. And they yep in and out. But women go shopping to find out what we want. <laughs> See, we'll hang around that, that clothes rack until we find something worthy, right? 
And then online, we'll place a ticket in, in our carts, and we're waiting for that exact moment for the price to come down. Anybody do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I must, must admit that we can go to the extreme on that, too, because shopping can be considered as modern-day idol worshiping. Yeah, that's the, that's the other side of that, uh -huh, that coin. See, the Bible said, lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets us or entrap us. And when we go overboard, that's sin. Somebody say, that's sin. Yeah. That's sin. Come on. <laughs> See, anything that takes God's place in our heart is an idol. Any type of possession, careers, and even relationships. Okay, so the point is sometimes we, we hang around the, the wrong people longer than we should. Is that right? Uh -huh. Do I have any amens on that one? Amen. Mm -hmm. We got to know our worth and never settle for anything less because sometimes we struggle with our own self-worth and our own self-esteem. See, if you don't value yourself, then you'll be always attracted to people that don't value you either. Is that the truth? Mm -hmm. See, if you aren't being treated with care and respect, check your price tag. Maybe you mark yourself down. See, it's you who tell people what you're worth. Get off the clearance rack and get behind the glass where they keep the valuables. Amen? amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Mm -hmm. See, when we realize our self-worth, we'll stop giving out discounts. Is that true? See, when you see that he only wants your breasts, legs, and thighs, send them to KFC. <laughs> right? <laughs> if that's all you want. See, we are kingdom kids. Psalms 139 and 14 says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. See, so we should wake up every morning and repeat the affirmation, I am beautiful. I am strong. Come on, say it with me. I am beautiful. I am strong. I am smart. I am talented. I am powerful. And I am enough. See, that will command your morning. And then you'll say, best day ever at the end of the day. Amen? See, that was the problem with the people of Israel. They forgot who they were and whose they were. Now, this was a test of power. Elijah said, let us have a contest to see who is the real God. Somebody say, it's going down. It's going down. Uh-huh. See, he then instructed the people to bring wood to build two altars, one for Jehovah and one for Baal. And then he told them to bring two animals for sacrifice, one for Jehovah and one for Baal. Now, this is the catch, right? They could not light the altar with fire. So now the people agreed that this was a good plan. So then he said, the prophets of Baal, y'all go first. Y'all got more than I do. It's more of you than me. So they cried out. They danced around the altar from morning until the time of the evening sacrifice with no answer from Baal. Elijah began to mock them and saying, shout louder. Perhaps he's in deep thought, or he's busy, or maybe he's traveling, or he's on vacation, like our pastor. Mm. <laughs> maybe he's sleeping, and you got to wake him, or maybe he's on the toilet. You know, where is your God? So now that they angered the, the, the prophets, and now they begin to shout louder, and guess what they do? They even slashed themselves. They made blood come out of their bodies. This is what they did as a custom so that the blood would flow. But still, no answer. Nothing happened. No response. And no one pays attention. So I say heavens. Mm -hmm. Now it's Elijah time. So he called the people to repair the altar, just as described early in, in, the, in the Bible. And he used 12 stones, and, and he dug a trench around the altar, and then he placed the wood on the altar, and then he cut several pieces of the of the sacrifice of the bull and put it on the altar. And then Elijah said, he asked the people to douse the, the altar with 12 large jars of water. Yeah, he wanted to make sure that you'll see what his God can do. 
So they did this. The water soaked the sacrifice. The water soaked the wood. The water also dug that was, that was, that was dug around the altar. It was filled to the brim. Now, Elijah wanted to make sure that the fire fell from heaven. And nobody would doubt that it was from the one true God. Now, Exodus 14 and 14 says that the Lord will fight for you. You just need to be still. Somebody say, be still. Now, once the sacrifice was ready, Elijah prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so that these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. God has a love for the people. Amen? Elijah didn't have to say a whole bunch of words because he knew that the God that he served and that was praying to was real, alive, and his God was listening. Somebody say amen. amen. Mm -hmm. See, then God did what Baal could never do. Somebody say, it's going down. It's going, it's going down. down. See, because the fire of the Lord fell from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stone and the dust and also lifted up the trench, the water in the trench. Okay? <laughs> so when the people of Israel saw this, they dropped immediately to the ground in fear and they cried out, the Lord, he is God. Come on. The Lord, he is God. Let's give God a hand. Amen? Because they will see your God. Amen? Uh-huh. Psalm 78, 35 says that they remembered that God was their rock and the most high God, their redeemer. So God showed up and he did what? He showed out. Mm -hmm. My God reigns, <laughs> our God reigns. Yeah. Lord, you reign above yeah. every name. With power and majesty, mm -hmm. dominion, authority, you reign. Over my circumstance, giving me another chance. Mm -hmm. You reign. Didn't we just sing that? Yeah. Ain't God good. <laughs> so in conclusion, if something stops you from getting closer to God, you need to let it go. Somebody said let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Uh -huh. See, if we have to kick it, push it, or even run from it, ladies, we got to let it go, right? We got to run like there's a hot guy in front of us and a creepy guy behind us. <laughs> Amen? We got to let it go. We got to mind, y'all. <laughs> See, sometimes we can be in a bad environment for so long that we forget who we are. See, they read us uh, from our praise team, these song called Big. And the lyrics are, my God is big, so strong, so mighty. My God plan for me goes beyond my wildest dreams. There's nothing my God cannot do. There's nothing my God cannot do. Do y'all believe that? If you do, come on, let's give God a hand. In life, there's plenty of obstacles that would make you doubt your very existence. But no matter what the odds, no matter how difficult the task, no matter how big the mess is, no matter who you are or where you came from, if you believe in God, there is nothing that he cannot do. Philippians 4.13 says that I can do what? All, All things. things. Is that some things? All, All things. Through who? Right. Uh -huh. And what does he do? Right. He strengthens me. Now, if you believe that, let's give God another hand. <laughs> yes, because he came here to, yes, 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 yes. He came here to, to show that God is bigger than anything else. And when it was all said and done, not only was it going down, but it went down. And everybody who was supposed to be there to witness the glory of God was there. Now, Elijah then commanded the people to put the prophets of Baal to death and keep them with God's commandment in Exodus 22 and 20. So following the event, the Lord finally ended the drought and sent rain upon the land. So if you don't remember any things, know that God is in control and know that there's just one God and there's nothing that he cannot do. But you must choose between good and bad. You must choose because God allows us to go, to go through some things to get our attention so he can bring us back. So hear me out. When you're not going through, you're not going through because you didn't forward that email to 10 people. Okay, I just want to make That is not the reason. 
okay? <laughs> Proverbs 16 and 3 says, you've been set up to commit to the Lord and whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Elijah prayed to his God, who responded by accepting the sacrifice, having the false God slap, uh, slaughtered and providing an abundance of rain. There's nothing too hard for God. So the challenge is, will you follow the crowd or will you follow Christ? We all have to make a decision. You can either be the problem or the solution. The path that Jesus took isn't a, path, uh, a popular path, but Jesus came to earth for us to understand that God's opinion is the only one that matters. And he wants us to stand up for what's right, even if you're standing alone. But because we know the truth is that you're not alone. You got God of the universe on your side. So what will you do? Guess what? It's going down. Amen? We thank God. Come on, let's give God a great big old applause. All this will be over. Yes. We thank him for all that he's done. We thank him for showing us that when we stick with him, he's closer than a brother. Amen? Amen. So we, we praise God. We, we magnify his name. Because at the end of the day, it's going down. Amen. Come on, let's put your hands together. We got to be served. Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. <laughs>
touch our hearts and our minds and give us recognition of who you are. We thank you for the fact that you are with us as you are with the life, Lord God. You're in our hearts. And Lord God, we know that when we stand against the enemy, you're with us, Lord God. Help us to be bold as Elijah was. Help us to have courage, Lord God, to be still and know that you are God and God alone. There's no one or nothing greater than you. Lord God, help us to remember that in the times of temptation, the times of war, the times where it seems like everything and everyone is against us, Lord God. Help us to recognize that us plus you equal majority. And Lord God, we love you, Lord God. We put our faith and our love at your feet, asking you to have your way in our lives. Touch each and every soul represented in this place on today. And we ask these things by faith in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. May we see you. necessary items. We have hand sanitizer. We have masks. We have everything to make you comfortable. But if that's not you yet, we just praying for you and ask that you will continue to pray for us wherever you might be until that time has come when you're ready to come back and share in Christ physically. We thank you. We'll see you next week live and in living color at 1030 a.m. next Sunday morning. Or if you'd like to join us in our Bible study, our midweek Bible study, our food for your soul, you can join us on Zoom. You can join us on Zoom. You can copy down that link. And if you can't get it that quick, just inbox our pastor, Pastor Cunningham, and get the link from that. And we'll make sure that we get that to you so you can join us in our midweek Bible study, food for your soul. God bless until we meet you again next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. on this channel. We'll see you soon. Amen. So right now, um, God's way, we're going to go ahead and partake of our communion. Um, leaders, let's get ourselves in a position where we can serve people of God. Yay! Yay! Amen. We know that on the night before Jesus was arrested. He sat with the disciples and they ate and they drank together. And he told them, he says, I will eat and drink with you no more until I eat with you and do in my father's kingdom. And they shared on that night. And no doubt there was some apprehension, there was some anger, there was some pretty much every type of emotion that there could possibly be. But it had to happen. So that scripture might be fulfilled, that he might be led like a sheep to the slaughter. He prayed for us in the garden of the seven. 
not only did he pray for us, but he prayed that if it be the will of God, that the cup might pass. But we know what happened, right? It just wasn't in God's brain. It wasn't in God's brain. Because the scripture lets us know without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. So he had to go through Calvary so that we all might be free. But before going, he made sure that he prayed. He made sure that he took time to speak with the Father. This is your opportunity to do that right now. Before you partake of this holy sacrament, if there's anything that's going on with you and your fellow man, if there's anything going on with you and somebody in your home, this is your opportunity to get that right with you. Them and with God. This is your opportunity to search your own heart and ask the Lord to move upon it. I'm going to give you that chance. Because whether we know it or not, we all need it. So let us just take a moment where we ask the Lord to search us and to keep us. Over the 
the juice, which is a representation of his blood. Heavenly Father, we thank you yet for another day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have, we have centered right now all of our tensions on, on remembering you. We thank you that, that you went up to Calvary, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you offered yourself as a living sacrifice. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that even though you were beaten, even though and beat you. You allowed you allowed it because you had a greater purpose for us. So we thank you Lord Jesus that even on that cross that you didn't give up and because of it we can, we can love you. We can see another day. Oh God, we thank you for, the, for your blood. We thank you for your body. We thank you for living, sharing just for us. Pray. Let everyone say amen. Lord God, we thank you for the representation of your blood that can be found in these holy sacraments. Father God, we just pray right now that our hearts will be searched by you. That if there's anything that you find in the please and that you'll remove. Lord God, help us with our anger. Help us with our atmosphere. Help us with in those areas in which we don't represent you to the fullest. Lord God, we ask that you would continue to bless us in a mighty way. Continue to lead us and guide us in the pathway that you would have us to go. Have mercy on our households. Have mercy on our children, our children's children. Yes. Lord God, just help us to be better Christians in these last and evil days. We ask right now that your will and your way will be done in our lives. And that we won't make a mockery of you, but we'll make you proud. It's in the name of Jesus we pray and we ask it all. Thank God. Amen. So we're not going to have you come up. We're going to serve you at your seats.
And then he took a cup, and when he did, had given thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take drink. Until we see you again on next week, God bless and God keep you all.